Lake Erie. It's not very scary. You and your rocks. Lake Erie was the last of the Great Lakes for us to see. So it's really neat to be there and be able to touch the water and just kind of put that into the trip. We made a short little jaunt through Pennsylvania. We didn't see anything at this time because we got more stuff planned on a later trip. As we go back through down the south, we'll see more of Pennsylvania. And during the research for the trip, Sonia found this kazoo museum. We thought the only kazoo museum was down in the Carolinas that we missed when we were down there before. And when we were planning this trip, she found this one, so we had to stop. It was on the way. It was a neat little shop. Uh, we missed out because the, the factory itself, which is still running from equipment that was built in the early 1900s, uh, it's actually operated by uh, persons with disability and they run it till three we were there at a quarter after these are all the original equipment that have been making kazoos since the early 1900s it's a multi-step process with each machine having a specific part of the tooling to make the final product. They had a neat gift shop there as well. And through the processes, they've also used parts from uh, the kazoos that they're making in process to make custom kazoos that look like race cars or airplanes or a cob of corn. So those are kind of neat to see as well. And it's neat to see that they're still running the same machinery that's been going since the early 1900s. There was one of them that was broken, so they just moved the belt off the main drive so it wasn't operating while all the others did. And of course, 
Sonia had to make her own. Head and over. One more foot. Good girl. Good. Now you've got it together. So go ahead and back your kazoo up and take, take them off. Once they have the kazoo together, you're going to see you have a big seam here and a big seam here. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're playing, we don't want air to come out there. We mm -hmm. want all the air to come out here. So the next job is to seal it both on the inside and the outside. They bring it over here to the big seamer. Mm -hmm. That's called the big mama here. Inside that machine, there are four augers just like this. So we're going to put your kazoo up here just like that. The job is to push the kazoo all the way to the bottom that seals it on the inside. Okay. So here we go. You're going to turn the wheel again that way. And then you're going to come back up against the block. Keep going. You want to end up way down here, which you just did. Perfect job. And see how your auger's all the way in now? Right. Now what we're going to do is back your kazoo up. It's going to go inside that housing. In order to seal it on the outside, this machine has a great big vise. Well, you can see our vise is kind of little here. Mm -hmm. So what we use is manpower. Mm -hmm. And if you pull this lever straight up as hard as you can, that vise will come down and seal it. Okay, so come on over here. Good photo op here. This will show everyone, the whole world, how strong she is. <laughs> oh, very. <laughs> I think you're getting it pretty good though. All right, good job. Go ahead. If you did not squeeze it enough, it won't come off. Okay? okay? If you did, it'll pop right off. So good job. Okay, again, remember, this is your I resonator. Know. It's gonna go with the cardboard on the top. Okay. And then this is your cap. You're gonna pop it right on the top there and push it down. That's to keep that resonator safe and hold it in place. Okay. And then how do you play a kazoo? Wrong end. Wrong end. No blowing. You must hum. hum. <laughs> we want to make sure that it's going to vibrate, so make sure you sort of do a little laugh or something in there when you hear it. Okay, okay, it's vibrating. Good job! It was an actually a, quite a fun stop. If you're in Eden, New York area, you should stop by and say hi. Then it was on to Niagara Falls. Sonya's been there before, but I haven't. It's kind of amazing to see the rivers that... I've seen more powerful rivers, but I've never seen falls like this before. And the sheer volume of water going over both sides of the falls is amazing. This is a footbridge you could take over to the American Falls to get a closer look and also an observation deck. There's a lot of power in those falls. It's amazing how quiet it would be until you get right up to the edge and then how loud it would get really fast. It's also amazing how much mist would come up from both falls. This is the American Falls side of the uh, 
the falls. And then the Horseshoe Falls is a little bit to the north of this. So we did take the time to go over to the observation deck and the uh, falls to the left there are the American Falls and the big cloud of mist you can see in the distance is Horseshoe Falls. You see that pathway down below, we could take the elevator down there and we did. It really makes the power of the falls that much more impressive when you're standing that close to it. Then we walked over to the observation for Horseshoe Falls. It was a relatively cool morning. We opted not to take the Maid of the Mist boats. I think that was a good option. I think both of us would have got a little too cold. Still just amazing the sheer amount of water going over the falls every second. We were also lucky we got there earlier in the morning and the crowds really weren't that bad. By the time we decided to leave, the parking lot was a lot fuller and there was a lot more people there. So if you do go to Niagara, try to get there early. Old Fort Niagara. This was a surprise for a visit for us. We didn't know anything about it until we arrived at our campground. Sonia found a flyer for this, and it looked interesting, so we decided to go. And of course, as a side benefit, there is the old Fort Niagara lighthouse. It replaced the light that was first placed on the French castle inside the fort, which was the first lighthouse for the Great Lakes. It 
is a neat looking lighthouse. You can see the different color brick near the top. After years of service they decided to make it a little bit taller so that's a new section they added. The gray brick is all original. Look at the counterweights for the gate. Look at all the cannons. After the cool mortar demonstration, we decided to check out the rest of the fort. This is what they call the French Castle. It was built in 1726. We couldn't find any detailed information, but it appears that all of the doors are original, the door hardware is original, the interior floor joists, the interior floors, everything appears to be original. The roof does look like it's been worked on in recent decades, but they did used to have a lighthouse mounted on the top of it, which has been removed. This fort was amazing. It was so complete. Other buildings were constructed in the 1700s, some into the 1800s, as it changed hands from the French had it initially. The British took it over from the French, and then after the Revolutionary War it was turned over to the Americans. This fort has been through several conflicts. And it's just amazing how much is still preserved there on site. In some of the information we were reading about it, it sounded like it was used up into the 1960s. Back in the 40s, it was actually a training post for soldiers preparing for World War II. So this fort's been around a long time and it's seen a lot of history. As you can tell from the amount of video, we spent a lot of time in the French castle. And it's right on Lake Ontario.
what was really interesting is this is the second floor that we're on now and as you can look at the floor itself it's still stone I think that was done so that any hot items during wartime either being fired at the fort or from being fired from the fort landing on the floor wouldn't catch a wooden floor on fire I'm not sure of that fact but it was interesting to see a true stone floor on the second floor and this is the third floor and those are all gun ports out of the, the rooftops that soldiers could use to fire from. bakehouse fairly complete still with its ovens amazing how far back those ovens went of course with the amount of soldiers they would have gone through a lot of bread but you could bake a lot of bread in one of those in one day And the powder magazine had immensely thick walls and roof which makes sense so that when the fort was shelled it uh, would be able to withhold from the powder being detonated it was a really really neat fort to go see and I'm so glad we were able to do it I would say it was probably the highlight of New York. Hope you all enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one.